In this lesson, we're going to learn how to open projects, open scenes, change our layout, and move around our scene inside of Unity. So I've just created a new project and opened it up here. If this is the first time you're launching Unity, you've probably got the example project open or a project you've created. To follow along with these lessons, you can download our project files, and let's open up the project that comes with those files. So once you've unzipped them, we can go to Open Project, and this is an area where we can see all the project we've worked on in the past. So if you've never opened this project before, let's go to Open Other. And it's going to ask us what folder is a or what folder is the Unity project we want to open. Now I've just unzipped mine to the project files and Digital Tutors demo. Now you'll notice here, depending on what we select, it's going to tell us the selected folder is not a Unity project. So it takes a few things for a folder to actually be a Unity project. If we click on Digital Tutors demo, you'll notice that disappears and select folder lights up. So this is important. There's really only one folder that we can select to open up a project, and that is the main project folder, which is named exactly as you've named the project. So let's select this folder, and Unity is actually going to have to restart and come back to open up any new project. So whenever you change projects, which is essentially changing games, Unity will restart and then reopen. Now it's going to dump us into an empty scene. So to open up a scene, you can simply go to either File, Open Scene, or much easier, go into your project panel and double click it. So we have this DT demo level, and just double click that, and we now have this scene open. Now, uh, it's not always customary to save the scenes on the root level. Uh, usually we save them inside of this scenes folder. So now that we've got the scene open, let's just talk briefly about the layout. Throughout this course, we're probably going to be using the wide layout, which you can access by uh, going up here and choosing wide, and that will give us our scene, our game, and so forth. Now, if you've accidentally closed one of these tabs by right-clicking and close tab, you can bring that back by going to window and clicking on the tab you closed. Now, this is going to pop it up in a new window, but to bring it back into the interface, simply grab that tab, left-click and drag, and drop it wherever you would like. So now we have our scene back and in the correct position. So now it's talking about moving around the scene. Now we can select the hand icon up here and left click to pan around the scene, right click to orbit, and then use our middle scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Now if you've used Maya before, we also have that control scheme, and if you haven't, let's just get familiar with that really quickly. If you do not want to use the uh, hand icon, and I usually do not, hold down the Alt key and left click and drag to orbit, right click and drag to zoom in and out and middle click to pan around. Now we actually also have one more control scheme and that is holding down the right click button and using the usual FPS controls. So the WASD, so W will move us forward, A will move us to the left or sidestep to the left, D will sidestep to the right and S will move backwards. Now if you're working in a large scene and you want to move a little faster, you can hit W or hit any of the WASDs and then hit Shift. And this is going to turn your uh, uh, camera into overdrive and you can see here it's going quite fast for this small level. But if you ever need to jump fast or quickly to any area, you can use the right click and the WASD and Shift keys to uh, navigate your level in a more traditional fashion. Now let's say we wanted to come in and find something that we know is in our hierarchy. So for example, let's dial down our triggers and let's say we wanted to jump to the main damage trigger. Now we can select it in our hierarchy and we can use the F key to frame in on that object. If we hit F, our view will change so that we can now see this object in our scene view. Now framing is not only useful for finding objects, but it's also useful for setting our orbit point. For example, once we've framed in on this object, we can hold Alt, left click and drag, and now our camera orbit will be centered around this position. Now this is going to fail as soon as we pan. So if we hold Alt and middle click, you can see our orbit is now off. 
So if we wanted to reset that orbit, we can hit the F key to frame in on the selected object. And this is, of course, an incredibly useful tool if you want to select something and quickly jump right to it and be able to orbit around it. So again, that is the F key, and it's found under the Edit Frame Selected if you need to use it in a menu. Now, two more things that we want to look at before we go. One of them is this gizmo up in the top right, and this is the scene gizmo. Now, some people uh, you like using this type of thing, and it allows us to jump to an orthographic view, which is incredibly useful for doing things like placing an object and being able to see our scene in this area. Now, if we left click or we hold Alt and left click to orbit, we can see our scene looks incredibly different. And if we zoom in, everything, everything looks a little strange. And that's because we have changed our scene view to isometric, which is completely removing all of the perspective distortion we're used to seeing through a camera. Now, some games are built isometrically, and as you can see here, Unity supports that. But if you want to change your camera back to a normal perspective view, just click on the center here to change that back to perspective. So again, if you find your camera is stuck in isometric view, just click on the center of this scene gizmo, and it will jump back right to perspective view. And again, this is very useful for example, jumping to the top of our scene and being able to see an isometric view from the top down. And this is great, of course, as you can see for seeing where our lights are, our audio sources, or any other thing. Once I'm done with this scene, just middle click in the center and we're back to our normal controls. Now finally, if you're seeing something different than you're seeing on my screen, that may be some of your scene settings, which we find here. For example, most of the time I'm going to stay on this textured tab, which shows me the textures, the shading, and the lights depending on another setting, but we can jump to wireframe as well, and there's of course many other settings here. So again, I'm going to be mostly staying on textured. Now, if you're seeing something else that's strange, it might be this drop down here where we can see the alpha and so forth. So I'm going to keep this at RGB. Finally, we've got these three toggles which show us whether we want the lighting turned on and whether we want the grid or the object inside of our scene. So I usually keep the lighting turned on so I can see this nice and easily. And we can turn this on as well if we want to actually see this without that grid interfering. And finally, this last one is allowing us to play audio if we get close to it. But again, that depends on what you're doing. Okay, so now that we know how to navigate inside of our scene and how to move around our scene, find objects, and how to change our view to match our current view, let's now jump into the next lesson where we're going to begin playtesting our game and seeing how that whole workflow works here in Unity.